Hello, hello. Oh, all right. Sorry. Hello, hello. Oh, God damn it. Hello, hello. I think my voice is just... No, I think... Okay, never mind. I think my voice is too loud for this game. Or is my microphone? It's probably my microphone. That's a good... That's a good chance, yeah. Alright. Oh, I actually do have another game I wanted to play with Hatchet. Okay, what is it? It's a Russian horror choose-your-own-adventure type game. A Russian horror choose-your-own-adventure type it, it's, game? It's based around in the area of Russia. And, and you're on the military submarine thing. Yeah. What's this, Albert? I wanted to play with you when I first started it, but you weren't online. Uh. And I enjoyed it. I already did one run, and I kind of want to see what your run goes. So I'm going to let you make choices. Oh, okay. This sounds interesting. Yeah. It, I believe there's like a shit ton of endings, so... Uh, wait, am I really loud on stream? Jesus fucking Christ. I'm very sorry, Bookhorn, if I'm really loud. Um, I'm getting a new microphone, so we're gonna have to deal with it till Monday. Oh, yeah, and the deep frying is also coming through on stream a bit. Yeah, I had to turn it down. Sounds good to Bookhorn, apparently. Alright. Uh, yeah, I don't. See. I don't even know how to say that the the its name. <laughs> I just guessed when I said it. Oh yeah, I should probably change it on Twitch because I'm not playing that game as much as I want to. I can't because my fucking microphone is a piece of shit. Well, at least now I don't have to whisper the entire time. <laughs> I noticed, like, actually has a Twitch category, because I put it in this once. Yeah. There it is. With two viewers currently watching <laughs> this. Right. I think I know where those two viewers are coming from. <laughs> well, wait, like, if, if, you, if it was saying that before you actually... Oh, that right. it, then th those were two people that are watching it elsewhere. Right. I mean, it doesn't have, like... It doesn't show, like, what's going on all the time, but it's, like, still fun. You know, like, like, whatever you do changes the story dramatically in some sometimes. Gotcha. So just let me know when you're ready to begin I'm still typing and also there is a slight issue that you have overlooked all right discord dipshit <laughs> shut up yeah and I think the next person we sh oh wait I'm gonna see if I can get Jerry in here Yeah. So I want to see what every, everyone else's runs will look like the first time they do it. Okay. Um, how, personality test. Yeah. How mine's ended is, uh, I basically, you might, huh? You might not want to say how yours ended. Oh, fair. I just was a pussy. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> What's new? <laughs> Fuck you! I'm not a pussy in every game, you know that. Sometimes I'm a, I'm stupid and run towards the danger. 
Actually, that's most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> be frank. With you, that actually is being a pussy because you're getting it over with quickly rather than actually trying. <laughs> Fuck you. Bookworm, no. protect me. You're, you're my billionaire. You're supposed to protect me against Hatcher right now. Well, you see, that's the thing. But book is all like we're we're on we're both streamers now. Book yeah. is a fan of both of our channels now. But anyway, I I have completed typing what I need to to a friend on Discord. Let us continue. So let us begin. All right, begin. Yes. The pair oh. The best experience, please use headphones. Put the top control volume. I think I've already set it perfectly. So. Mm -hmm. You can hear everything right, the music. I need to turn it up a bit. Well, you know you're ready. I, I guess it sounds good. <laughs> November 9th, 1962. Your name is Victor Pavlov. No, my name is Albert. <laughs> you are an oceanographer aboard the Soviet frigate. The parents. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, good luck. Parents. Me. <laughs> Mish. Me. Perish. You're aboard <laughs> the Soviet frigate known only as Parmesan have been tasked with mapping the ocean floor of a region in the Arctic Sea. Oh shit, there's something I didn't even notice before in this game. What? In the top right corner there's a thing called paranoia with a zero. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm always paranoid. Yeah. Oh yeah. One thing with this game, when it shows like a red thing right here, you can read it for extra info. So like, if you want me to read that stuff, let me know. Okay. Sitting on the cart in your personal quarters. Uh, you are currently sitting on the cart in your personal quarters. Come to think of it, how long is this game? It didn't take me that long. I think it only took me like 45 minutes to get one run. I think it depends uh -huh. on your run. Yeah, fair. It is a small room with just enough space for a bed and a small desk. A torn envelope lies on your desk. You are fiddling with a small silver locket containing a picture of your wife and daughter. Just go ahead and press the envelope. Oh, God, the font is so tiny. <laughs> oh, no. I have to sit up and get close to screen. Even I'm, I'm literally watching this on a fucking sp flat screen TV, and I have to get up closer <laughs> to the screen to read it. What is this bullshit? <laughs> Dear, my name is not Vector. My name is Albert. <laughs> Dear Albert, I don't know how much longer I can do this. I haven't seen or heard from you for months. I understand that the work you do is important, but you, sh but you should be here. If not for me, then for... Kaya? Maya. Raya? Oh, that's an M? Yes. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fucking M. Yes. <laughs> it looked more like a K or an R. He needs a father. I wanted it to be you you left. I know the Union needed you, but I wish you had stayed when I asked. Hello, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Since you left, Leon Leonid has been ca coming by more often. He's helping me raise Maya. Just the other day, she called him father. I wanted to correct her, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. 
because in some ways he is her father. He has oh. always been there, and you haven't. You've been off in the Arctic, spending time with fucking belugas or something. <laughs> she is, she is replacing you with him. I still love you, but you're losing Maya. Please come back, with love. Uh, Orina? Yeah. Or is it Liana? That's what I said. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jer this is life. Yeah, uh, Jer I'm having Hatchet do their run. They don't have you do your own choices. Cause I already did my choices before on a different stream. I couldn't quite hear you for some reason. Discord kind of blanked your voice out for a bit. Really? Yep. Oh, I was just saying I'm having Hatchet do his run. Then I'm gonna have you do your run. All right. All right. Put the letter down. Then we can just hit next. <laughs> exactly. You grab the notebook and leave the room. You head towards the mess hall where the rest of the crew is eating dinner. When you arrive at the door, you hear loud muffled voices on the other side. You may enter whenever you are ready. One hour later. <laughs> you were just standing in front of the door for an hour. <laughs> I want to go spend my time with belugas. <laughs> belugas are better than people. <laughs> hey, Finn. Finn. Hey. It's Finn of Beluga. <laughs> no, it's it's little Finn and my cat, and he's being a shit. <laughs> Stop! No. Peace. Yeah, don't call the cat a beluga, Bright. Aren't they the same? No! <laughs> Belugas are whales. Cats are not whales. Yeah, but they're both mammals. Being a mammal doesn't mean it's the same thing. <laughs> oh, man. Ah. <laughs> I, I would try to create distinctions between the life forms, but unfortunately, it seems that we're all eukaryotes right now. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Fuck you. Anyway, enter the mess hall. You open the door and grab some food. Tonight, it is mashed potatoes and peas. You sit down at the table and open up your notebook. There's a chart of you, my feet. You I see inside. As you look over your notes, there is a loud burst of laughter from the from the crew. Yeah. Also, when it shows white, that leads you to the next line on a run. So, okay. Red is information. White is next. <laughs> well, what is chart? I want to chart the maps of the ocean floor that were made using sonography. Something about the charts of this region doesn't make sense to you. In the charts, there's a large body of mass at the bottom of the ocean. Natural formations of the sea. This alone perplexed you, but the second chart you made showed the mass move. To be safe, you made a third chart. In the final chart, you saw what appeared to be a chunk of the mass break off from the main body. The shape of the mask does not look like any known animals, and there is no information on any plant-based life that could have that could move that fast. Sure, if you accidentally discover a new species of aquatic life, or if your senses are on the fritz. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's mm -hmm. the thing. There's actually a good explanation for this that, like, at the very least, could be reason to. And that's the fucking lanternfish. Their uh, lanternfish make up like... A, oh, I don't remember the exact amount, but the vast majority of fish life in the ocean is just these tiny-ass little bioluminescent fish that live, like, that, that go between the, uh, like, the surface and some of the deeper levels. And their schools are fucking gigantic. 
to the point that when a lot of early sonography was being used to try to map out the sea floor, a lot of those sonographs were just fucking wrong because they were mapping the fish. They they were they were mapping the fish as the sea floor. <laughs> you laughed, Bright, but that was a real thing. That's amazing. I kind of want a copy of those charts. <laughs> it's 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 crazy right. cool, but also really fucking dumb. Yeah. It's really dumb. You call that dumb, but if you had the same like knowledge as they did and saw those fish, you'd probably think they were the gosh heck in like floor two. Yeah. Oh no, like that's the thing. Like I'm not I'm not blaming the people who did that. Like mm. like I, I think it's dumb just in the sense that like how do I they put were it? trolled by fish. Yeah, they were trolled by fish. That's a good way to put it. The fish got a one up on the humans. Human zero fish one. Oh, yeah, speaking of trolling, uh, apparently there was a Disney movie that they added a Rick Roll in it. I kid you not, they did it. Right after the credits, there was a Rick Roll. Discord is really not on your side today, huh? Did you hear what I said at all? Something a decent about a Rick bit. Roll and credits? I said in a Disney movie, at the, after the end of the credits, they added a Rick Roll. That's stupid. It was the Wreck-It Ralph. It, it was Wreck-It Ralph breaks the internet. That seems more appropriate. Also, I'm turning you the fuck down. Okay. Anyways, ready to see why they're laughing? They're laughing because their their fucking uh, crewmate over there is being baffled because they're getting trolled by fish. <laughs> At the other table, the crew was laughing at E. Yoronev was two different plates. Was two different plates for his peas and potatoes. A bellowing laugh fills the room, and you look over to see Oborev, who is grinning ear to ear. Yoronev begins gesturing towards his plates. Yeah, now you're about to find out about these two people. Yes, let's. You're okay, you're actually being smart hatchet because some of the runs will be determined on what is said about these characters. I'm just oh, letting okay. you know that now. So yeah. Oh yeah, why would I rush through this? I have all the time in the world. <laughs> okay. Also, good luck. You're... <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> you don't have... Rusanovich, Rusanovich, is a deckhand on the Parmesan. He joined the Soviet Navy at a young age, mainly for the free grub and the pay. He was, he has a mild case of... <laughs> Brumotactylophobia, also known as the fear of different foods touching. This fear often causes, makes them the target of ridicule from other crew members. Well, those other crew members should shut there yet. <laughs> Soviet, the Soviet Union is supposed to be better than ableism. I know it's not, but it should be. Go also, them. Also, this is actually the first. This game actually taught me that that actually exists. Yeah, I've heard of it before. I haven't. This is, this is the first time I've. Like, when I first streamed this, this is the first time I've ever heard of it. So you've never heard of the fear of foods touching each other? No. Exactly. But you are the one who but you are the one who introduced us to the existence of that one uh, phobia that's like the fear of a duck or a goose somewhere watching you. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That means Bright is more interested in the less common phobias than in some of the most common phobias. Because it's Bright. What do you expect? I mean, I know the fear of long words. Which is a super long word. <laughs> it was just funny. <laughs> uh, uh, or the fear of... Uh, um, I forget the... I forget the what it's called, but like... 
there's a phobia that's like a fear of words that can be spelled the same way both forwards and backwards uh, like race car yeah and it's also one of those types of words the, yeah. the phobia can be spelled the same way forwards and backwards yeah there's also a phobia called phobia phobia which is a fear of phobias I assume you said something after that witch. Oh yeah, I said, uh, which is the fear of phobias. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Basically a fear of fear itself. Yeah. <laughs> I love being eating fear, I don't know, let's just continue. Or no, no, like, as, as in, like, what a similar name. Odorev Densovich is the resident mechanic for the... <sighs> My brain. <laughs> Both resident... sound immediately. <laughs> resident mechanic for the... <laughs> Pomeranian. <laughs> he has been working on the Pomeranian for six years, and has grown to be very fond of the ship. You once heard him cooing at the ship's engine when you walked by the boiler room. He was... <laughs> Is this guy fucking a ship? Possibly. <laughs> Putting ship course to a whole new I'm meaning. I'm going to comment that it's okay whatever he and the ship do together consensually, <laughs> as long as he keeps it in tip-top shape. So, there's, I mean, there's, like, there's one pro, like, there's one semantic issue with that statement, to the fact that I don't think the ship can consent, but also the ship isn't capable of thinking, I assume. So it's also a moot point. Really the real question know. is, the real question is, do the other crewmates consent to see him fucking the shit? <laughs> okay, oh this my is God. stupid. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you once heard him cooing at the ship's engine when you walked by the boiler. He has a very large build, but he is very friendly. You have not talked to him much, but you could see that. Oprah. Seem to enjoy talking to him. He is one of a kind. No one could replace him. I'm guessing we're being told this specifically because we're eventually going to have to choose one of these two to die. I'm not going to say anything. I'll just take that as a yes. Who's going into your Yoronev begins gesturing towards his plates. It was very simple. P here, potato here. P never touch potatoes. Yoronev attempts to explain anxiously. It, it's abomination. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong, y Yuri. Yuri? Yuri. That's your oh. nickname. Yuri is an actual name. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna. Well, you see, that's the thing. I'm not gonna be thinking about that name the entire time. Oh my god. Hold up. Do you hear that? Modifier. Orbev flings a few pieces into your of his mashed potatoes. Blaika, why you do this? The room bursts into laughter as everyone is ableist. Grumbles to pick the peas out of his potatoes. Now you, now's the first time where you have three choices that choose different runs. I refuse to give into bystand bystander effect. Tell Orbrev to lay off of Yuri. Uh, come on, Ch Ch Chuvak. It's all good fun. Yuri is good guy. Orbev replied with a chuckle. 
After exchanging a few words with some of the crew, you wrap up the meal and leave the mess hall to go back to your room. I'm guessing on your first run, you just did nothing. Oh no, I chose the same as you. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. When you get to your personal quarters, you sit down at your desk and begin to look over your notes. Jots of region. After a few hours, you notice your eyelids grow heavier and heavier. You start to think about sleep. Sleep is for the weak. Yeah, you're nar you have narcolepsy. No, it wasn't- what? <laughs> Sleep is for the weak. You crawl into bed and begin to fall asleep as the fade- as, as the text fades. Uh. <laughs> I can't be too loud. That's you fair. are awakened by a deafening scream. You climb to bed and rush towards the source. You are about to find a stunned- over him, mouth the cape, and eyes wide open, staring into a supply closet. You ready? What, what else would I be doing? As you get closer to the closet, you are hit with a pungent smell. You slowly peer inside, and your jaw immediately drops. The walls are drenched in blood, and death times are strewn through the shelves like ornaments and blood pools on the floor. One look at the intestines and you realize something terrible. is human. You feel your stomach churn as you stumble backward. Gagging, you lean on the wall for support. The torrent of footsteps is heard as the other crew members arrive. After a few minutes, the entire crew is at the like was it? You collect yourself and begin to observe the others. Some of the crew grab Oberev, still frozen in shock, and attempt to pull him away from the scene. Others gather in small groups and begin whispering. It's probably just animal, right? Think Yuri, another crew member into Jax. Does that look... Think Yuri. Another crew member interjects. Does that look like animal intestine? No. You wait for more of a crew to arrive. How can you? How do? How? How do you? Just like instinctually know the difference between human intestines and animal intestines? Aren't they like very hard the to? One more time. Well, yeah. But like, what did you just say, Jerry. The... For one, for five. The first difference would be the size. True. Aren't there like Another would oh. be the smell. Because oh. of the unique diet of humans, the flesh has a unique smell. It smells like McDonald's. Huh. <laughs> no, it smells this like is Soviet shit. Russia. It oh wait, Hatchet. Horrible. Hatchet, look, you have a three paranoia. Fun. But yeah, okay. Anyway. Soon, Captain's stepbrother. Oh my god. Captain's. Captain's stepbrother, help, I've caught him watching. Oh my god. I hate myself. <laughs> Captain Stepanov arrives and demands an explanation. As you look at the 13 crew members around you, you notice one odd detail that stands out to you. No one is missing. Yep. Here's another. Here's another choice that splits between two crossroads. What do you mean? Call it out or keep it to yourself? Call like, it call out it means like, like you say what that like. Hey, all of us are here. Keep it to yourself. You say nothing. Oh, uh, okay. Then uh. I mean, that seems like pretty pertinent information. We're already up to paranormal... Te paranormal... Paranoia 10. Uh, call it out. Do you not want to look at Captain Steppenwolf oh, wait. first? Right, yeah, I, f I forgot about him already. <laughs> yeah. Open up Steppenwolf. 
Captain Ramir Stepanov is the commanding officer of the Pomeranian. He rarely ever fraternizes with the rest of the crew and instead prefers to sit in his quarters alone, drinking the night away. Other than that, you do not know much about the captain, other than that he stays out of your way and you stay out of his. And he said to call what it out? An, what an incredibly good captain he is. Yeah, call it out. <laughs> so far, you, you and me both chose the same choices. The captain frowns. Just trust what? Uh, why are there texts to look? No one will help. So much blood. What's going on? Trust no one. No one will help. <laughs> why? The fucking hell. The captain is watching me. What's what? Something is here. No one will help. Why? Oh, no. yeah. Those are the other crewmates talking. <laughs> then who the fuck is saying it's watching me? Like, that's the background. It's on the. I don't know. I oh, don't. Yeah, but like, that's a very odd thing to randomly hear in a, in, in, in a crowd of people. Like, like, imagine you're at, like, Walmart, and you just, you just hear a random person behind you in the light. Oh, God, it's watching me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking weird. Yeah. I realized I was muted. <laughs> oh, no. That's fine, you missed nothing. Oh, uh, okay. Anyways. The captain frowns as you explain that the blood came from a human. But no one on board seems to be missing. What are you suggesting? That this... That this... That... That... that, that hmm. Why did I die? <laughs> what are you suggesting? That this from one of us? He gestures towards the pooling blood in the supply closet. That is... You cut in gruffly as he tries to dismiss you. We are only humans for a mile. It could come from no one else. The captain lets out a deep sigh and covers his face with a hand. He waits a few moments before turning to face you again. Yo, Mayo, what do you suggest then? You okay. Hmm? I'm an expert at this by now. There's an imposter among us. Oh my god. Yeah, the thing is, what, when, when I first read this, like, run test in the blood, out in the movie, the You're thing... You're cutting out a lot. Sorry, can you hear me better now? He's, yeah. I moved the microphone near my mouth. Anyway, basically, when I read run test in the blood, my mind immediately went to the thing, the movie. Okay. If you know what that is. You've mentioned it like 70 times by now. I know, it's one of my favorite horror movies, and I wish you got a... I, and I do hope it never gets a remake, because it's perfect as it is. My one and only goal in life is to create a terrible remake of The Thing. Fuck you. <laughs> the Thing will be shaped like Shrek. It will be nothing but lantern fish. What the fuck? The horrors of the thing will not be in the thing itself, but rather in the ecological destruction caused by it eating all the lantern fish. <laughs> anyway, run tests on the blood. Uh, another two choices. Stepanov gives you an incredulous look. Blood tests? Is this necessary? We don't have a lot of testing kits. I don't want to waste kits on kits on punch. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, you got two choices. Does this man care about the crew's disease? Probably, Probably not. not. So. We need to narrow down suspects so that we can catch the imposter. Blood tests will narrow down lists of suspects. Blood could have come from anyone here. 
but it is human, and we are only humans for miles, so it had to come from one of us. Captain Stefano squints as he thinks it over. After a few moments, he reluctantly nods to you, and then turns to address the crew. Vector will perform tests on blood. Until we get results, everyone will be in mess hall. As the crew heads towards the mess hall, you grab a sample of the blood and head to the medical room. My favorite room is known as medical room. Also, just as a quick side note, blood testing at this time would have been very rudimentary. So, I, I'm wondering how this will be of help. Unless we have like, like a blood type matching thing to go about. Well, you'll find out. You grab a blood test kit and the medical files for all the crew members. You plan to use blood type. Oh well. <laughs> That's why I said nothing. <laughs> I like attention to detail. There's no DNA analysis, only blood type matching right now. Because 60s. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, that would probably at least narrow it down. Well, yeah, like, like I've I've seen a few things about like criminal investigations from the time, and it was still like pretty standard uh, test procedures to get the blood type of any blood found to try to narrow down suspects. So I figure. Basically, my brain was going to whether or not this game is going to be accurate to the actual technology of the era. And they are. Anyway. You start to test and begin logging the blood types of each crew member as you are doing this. You'll still hear Bookworm? I only say this because my phone's not loading anything. Like, except for the video. So I, I can't tell if I can see messages. <laughs> I mean, the last thing that was sent was Bookworm saying rip. Oh. <laughs> Types of, uh, uh, test begin logging, uh, first, the first step of the test is completed. Begin the second step. Why are we, okay. We couldn't just put this all together. We could easily have put this all together into one, one paragraph. This is inefficient. Oh, wait. It could be Stefanov's, or Yuri's, or Orbe Orberev's. It could be Stefanov's. Was it Orbe? Why was I standing there? Well, Orbev, I shouldn't be Stefanov's. It couldn't be Yuri's. Really, bro? Why are we standing there? Was it Orbev? Oh my god. <laughs> Couldn't be Yervis. Large bottles of paint are in my eyes. Can we just Usually. get to the result? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You start speculating about where the blood could have come from as you wait for the results of the test. As soon as the test is complete, you compare it to the testing manual. The blood type is sub somewhat rare, a negative. You scan your notes of the crew's blood type and find that only two crew members have this blood type. Oborev Denstovich and Yoranev Raslovich. Both the missile. So one of them is imposter. Yep. We gather my, my, my anomalies. As you walk to the mess hall, you try to make sense of what you're even trying to say. If any person lost that amount of blood that was in the room, they would be dead. But you saw both Brev and Yurnev at the supply closet. The photos here are provided. Oh, okay. The supply closet. It couldn't be from one of them. You'd arrive at the door to the mess hall. You enter the mess hall to find the crew waiting for you. Some are eating breakfast, others still seem to be in shock. Captain Stepanov 
What the you walk in? Well, Victor, what did you find? You look around the room and spot Orbanov, who is sitting at the table, arms crossed and staring straight ahead. Next to him is Yermil. Yermil. He was eating leftovers from a plate in front of him. The plate contains both peas and potatoes. Now here's where you get the crossroads again. Huh. I shall keep that in mind in the future. But we probably share findings. I shall remember that. Uh, as you share your results, the crew turns around to look at the two suspects. Obrev doesn't fidget, and Yurnev continues to eat potatoes and peas. Captain Stepanov frowns. You'll notice as one crew member staring at Yurnev as he eats with a baffled look. He begins to speak. Y Yuri, your peas touch potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Your peas are a touch potato. At the uttering of these words, Wolver awakes from his daze and begins to glare at Yurt. Yurinev, the room is overcome with a deathly silence as the crew takes in this information. I stopped and looked around at everyone before answering. Yeah, so? Yes, so the real Yuri has fear of touching food. A food touching. He hates for peas to touch potato. Orbrev exclaimed. Orbrev, who is stands up. Orbrev's massive build looms over the much smaller Yurinev as he steps forward. You're not him. You're not really Yuri. You're not my friend. Oberev lunges at Yurinev, clasping his hands around Yurinev's neck. The rest of the crew rushes towards Yurinev to stop Yurinev to stop him. As the crew tries to pull Orbanev away, Yurinev lets out an unearthly scream and his eyes roll into the back of his head. Yurinev's body begins thrashing as black liquid begins oozing out of his eyes. His body contorts unnaturally as it begins transforming into something not of this world. Also, uh, I'm going to guess that the other guy is also dead. That, uh, yeah, or Orberev, because remember, Orberev is a gentle giant guy. It's out of character for him to immediately lunge and try to kill Yurinev. <laughs> They're both imposters. I solved it. One, one of the imposters is throwing their imposter buddy out to convince the other crewmates that they're not the imposter. This is a classic Chew maneuver. The crew backs away in fear as they watch Oberev struggle with the thrashing Yanev. After a few moments, Yanev's body goes limp. Suddenly, a yet black tentacles sprouts out of Yanev's back. Some of the crew let out terrified yelps as they scramble for the door. The creature walks. Oh, but. Ugh. My stomach does gas. <laughs> out some last streak before slashing Orbrev's leg with its tentacles and guttering off, escaping through one of the vents. The crew looks towards the vent. It's even venting! I saw it venting! Yeah. I hate myself. I saw your nev venting. I saw it with my own two eyes. Your nev is not, but is not engineer. Your nev venting and is not engineer. Oh, whatever, scurrying off, escaping to the one next to the vents. The crew looks towards the vent, confounded by the horror they just witnessed. Yeah, the second I heard the jet black tentacles coming out from Yuri's back, I thought Slender Man. Really? Because I, my, I'm thinking of other things. Yeah, Jet. <laughs> Their name is Yuri. 
Anyway. After a few moments, a few... A crew member runs over to Orberev and begins to treat his wife. There is some shouting to your left. You turn to see another crew member lying on the floor, blood spurting from his neck. A few people put him on a gurney and cart him out of the mess hall. As you come to your senses, you begin to come up with a plan. We need to evacuate. We have to abandon ship. Take lifeboats and get out of here. Captain Stepanov stares blankly ahead, almost as if in a daze. As you speak, he looks at you blankly. Slowly, he begins to shake his head, his blank expression gradually turning to anger. First off, Vector, you are not captain. I am. Second, we cannot abandon ship. Not because of some... some animal. <laughs> Bruh. Is everyone... is everyone infected with this thing? Is that what it is? Are no, we the only that's ones? Stupid. Uh, well, you know, if it's, it's an infection. It's for people in charge to not listen to reason because they feel that you're threatening their authority. Uh... This is why I cited... This is why I would never say it, but... I, I would never say it for sake of family, but I sided with Black Army in Rebellion. <laughs> anyway... That was not just Animal. That was a monster. It was Yuri. It replaced him. It could do it again. It already has. The captain has been taken. How do we know there isn't another... <laughs> Which one are you gonna do? Bring everyone or everyone? Then catch it broke while well, reading, because I... Among Us is in the, in the yeah. sentence. <laughs> it's too easy. When did this game come out? I think way before Among Us. Hmm. I think it's a really old game. I see. How but do we well... know that... <laughs> How do we know there isn't another one Among Us? Then Vector. Then Vector. If we bring it with us, the situation is saved. Yep, now you got another crossroad. Uh, hmm. It sounds like a. These are the only two options. Yep. You either bring everyone. Or you bring everyone except Orberev. Yep. Those are my options. Mm-hmm. Uh, question, Bright. Thus far, has this playthrough been the exact same as yours? Oh, no. You've made some choices that I didn't. Okay. All right. Fine then. Oh, actually, yeah, come to think of it, you probably walked in the mess hall and immediately started yelling about the peas and, t and, and potatoes touching. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I know you well enough to know that. Anyway, I guess, you know what? Okay, you know what? We'll frame it this way. Orborev? He gets to have a honeymoon with his lover. We bring everyone except Orberef. <laughs> okay. The blood we found was A negative. Only one here that is A, neg a negative is Orberef. It says on Steam it was released July 2020, so Among Us came out a couple years before and was able to have the start of its renaissance by then, lol. Why did you say that this is older than Among Us? Man, I was think. I thought it came it's out way earlier. I might have read a, a certain date of another game and it had a similar name. Because I have more than one Russian game listing on my Steam. Oh. So I probably got them confused with one another. Okay. We can't trust him. We take everyone but him. 
That may be true, but we can't leave. There are too many important shots and equipment on the ship to just abandon it. Find a creature. We kill creature. That's in order. How do we kill- how do we- How the fuck do you suggest we kill strange alien monster that is in vents now? <laughs> Stepanov walks away, but before he leaves, he orders two crew members to follow him to his chambers. You look after him with disdain. Why is he taking two crew members to his chambers? To fed them? Sorry, ignore me. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? To bed them. Oh, to bed them. I thought you said to fed them. <laughs> well, 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 I guess if you do certain things, it could be considered fed. Oh, I thought you were gonna fuck them. Right. Right. Do you not know the slang of saying that you're betting someone? No. No, he, no, she doesn't. She's stupid. <laughs> right. What? She's a okay. Person right. that would probably walk up to an unmarked white van promising candy. All right. Right. Let me let me ask you a short series of questions. Okay. Okay. One. During what situations do you normally hear Jiri say something and then immediately say, forget I said anything? Sex stuff. Okay. <laughs> Two. Jiri said, is he going to bed them? So... Using those two bits of information, what can you figure the terminology means? Sex That's stuff. Like the dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> My head hurt. You look around at the rest of the room as the captain leaves. The rest of the clue isn't the clue. The rest of the clues, blues clues. The rest of the crew is nervously fidgeting. Some stare at others with suspicion, others darting back and forth, eyes darting back and forth, assessing who they can trust. Others are already huddling in small groups, whispering frantically while occasionally glancing nervously at the others. You watch with dismay as some of the crew sneaks away. You need to act now. My friend that I invited to uh, look just sent me a, a DM that I invited to watch the stream. This is good. Anyway. Yes. You know the crew's best chance of survival is to escape before the creature can replace someone else. But Captain Stepanov on order and evacuation. Oberev is sitting in the corner. His leg has been freshly bandaged. He's alone. May I comment something? Yes? I don't think Ob Oberev is one of them. I think they were just having enough set of, uh, because people who are typically gentle giants, when they snap, they snap hard. And he had realized <laughs> Something literally murdered and replaced his friend. I'm only saying that because I feel like if he was one of the monsters, then wouldn't it show in his bandages? Wouldn't it show when he was injured? His blood looks normal. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Ask so. Oberev for help. Escape on your own. Organize a mutiny. Yeah. Oh, now I get why you said you took the coward's route. I did not choose option two. Oh. Damn. I had a friend. Oh. You took the first one? Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you harassed the poor big guy that's probably... 
Oh, I didn't that. harass him. Hatchet did. What? Yeah, I didn't. I never convicted Oberoff as being bad. You did. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, you said it, we need to keep every everyone but Oberoff when evacuating. I didn't say that. I said we take everyone. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I get it. Hmm. Anyway, um, we're organizing a mutiny. Okay. M okay, is what? for mutiny. Start a mutiny. Nice. Mm -hmm. Everyone, Stepanov cares more about equipment than our lives. We escape now and blow up ship so that the creature cannot follow. It'll kill us and replace us like Yuri if we don't. So we have to. Several members of the crew begin to get more riled up as they talk. It's time for a mutiny. As you finish your speech, some answer your call for a mutiny with thunderous war. Others shrink away and flee from the scene. You look around the room to see five members of the crew walking towards you. They stand in front of you with fists clenched, waiting for orders. I give orders. Five members of the crew have joined your mu mutiny. You order two to raid the armory and rig the ship to blow. The other two will ga gather the food from the kitchen and grab other supplies, and the last one will go with you to secure the lifeboat. You don't quite trust them enough yet to let them secure the boat without you. Leave the mess hall. We're getting off this ship. As you leave the mess hall, you tell them you tell the mutineer with you that you need to pick up some items in your room first. You walk briskly towards your room, the mutineer following close behind you, and you're not sure what his name is. Another crossroad. Oh. Huh. Huh. I'm going to go pee and warm up my coffee. Eric. Okay. All right. Ask his name. It's Boris. I worked in kitchen. You smile assuringly at him. Nice to meet you. Together we might make it out alive. You both continue running towards the living quarters. When you arrive at the living quarters, Boris states that he needs to get something from his room as well. You agree to meet at the entrance in five minutes. You then head to your room alone. Soon you arrive at your door. Opens the door. You open the door to your room. There is no one there, and there is a large knife lying on top of your desk. You often used it to open letters or carve when you were bored. You grab the knife, figuring a weapon might come in handy. You catch a glint in the corner of your eye and look to find your golden locket. It is open, and your daughter's face is smiling at you. You pause a moment before closing the locket and stashing it in your pocket. Locket in pocket, yes. As you grab the locket, you accidentally knock over some papers on your desk. You look over and see that it is the charts at the sea bottom in this area. The charts with the strange readings yesterday. Another crossroads. I mean, we already read over them. Like, are, would we get new information? Possibly, possibly not. We don't know. Well, I actually have no but... idea because I did not choose this route. Well, yeah. I'm kind of talking to myself, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> right? We read the charts. You remember the unidentified body of mass that spilled up on the Gods earlier. 
you'd start to wonder if it had something to do with the creature. As you read over the chart, you begin to piece together theories. In the third chart, a chunk of mass broke off from the main body and appeared to be moving. Will that chunk of mass enter ship and turn Yuri into corpse? You study the chart for a few more moments before finally realizing that the chart displays a slight altitude change for that chunk. Was it moving upwards towards the ship? If this thing came from the body of mass, could it be just a small part of much larger organism? Leave. You wait at the agreed upon waiting point. The porous doesn't show up. Your mind begins to wander as you wait. It's been five minutes and he's still not back yet. You begin to grow angsty. I like how your only it? option is leave him behind. <laughs> Do I leave him? Do I kill him? Do I leave him? Do I got him? I'm gonna kill me. He's... Do I run? When to kill? I... Man, he's gone. He... What the hell did I miss him for? Time. Sex. No. What? Okay, so I think you were here when we started mutiny. Yes. And I, the last you... thing I saw was asking the one guy's name. Okay, that guy is named Boris. We say hi to Boris. And then we go back to crew quarters to get things. We find charts that talk about strange thing that we saw at seafloor. We... we we begin to speculate the creature that killed the Yori is is actually creature that we saw on charts, and now we wait for for Boris to return, but Boris isn't back in time, and our only option is leave him behind. So we're wow. we're abandoning Boris. It's been too long. I will come after me next. I should leave. I love her. This is a pair of oh, wow. really fun. You'll turn to leave and begin walking when you hear someone behind you. Turn around. You've got knife. Comrade Vector. You pull the knife out of your pocket and clasp it behind your back as Boris runs up to you. He begins to eye you suspiciously. Were you going to leave me behind? Of course not, friend. You lie and tell him that you're you have to head towards the lifeboat now. You make sure that he is in front of you so that you watch his every move. Head toward the lifeboat. You start headed toward the lifeboat with the porous. As you walk behind him, you tighten your grip on the knife. Hidden behind your back, you begin to think, what should I do? What do you do? I, I, the, why is it the text is why was he lit? Oh yeah, the text is having more things. Something feels off. Why was he late? Uh, I've, I'm so paranoia. Uh. Uh. No, question him. I will not stab man for no reason. What do you mean, comrade? I am not a monster if that is what worries you. Here, let me prove it. He opens his bag and takes out a picture of a woman. This is my wife. Would want to keep picture with some... with sentimental value? I think no. Not like... No, let's keep moving. Or maybe the monster would just say that to convince me not to stab it. He turns around and continues walking toward the lifeboat. You are not entirely convinced. There is still so much that is unknown about the creature. Oh, I. Uh, well, uh, I didn't sign on for this shit. <laughs> this is why I wanted people to play it. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> it's a really good game because it, it literally makes you do tough decisions. Honestly, like. Literally, just the existence of a paranoia meter makes me more paranoid because I see the paranoia meter going up and like, oh, oh shit, you're getting more paranoid. That means I might need to be more paranoid.
Anyway, do nothing. I don't. I. I don't want to stab a man in the back. You walk towards the lifeboat with him. Suddenly, you hear a loud bang echo through the halls of the ship. You think it's a gunshot. You both begin to run. You begin to notice blood trails going in and out of some of the rooms. The monster has been busy. You turn the corner and see the lifeboat. As the lifeboat comes into view, you feel a way of relief over you. You can finally get out of here. However, your relief quickly flashes, fades as you hear something and see Captain Stepanov and one other person run around the corner. Vector, stop now! As Stepanov shouts, the crewman occupying him points a gun at you. I guess raise your hands up. Stepanov and his lackey begin to run towards you. The gun still pointed directly at your chest. Stepanov growls at you. Blige, you fucker. Starting a mutiny when monster runs ship. What is wrong with you? You split our forces. I had to kill crew member who was re rigging ship to blow. They shot my god. I didn't stop him. I didn't stop it in time. Ship will blow in 15 minutes. He just stood towards the shoulders next to him. I almost lost Pavel here in the chaos, but I found him again. To attempt to convince Stepanov to leave. Stepanov, we have to go. No. Stepanov cuts you off before you can finish. No, I'm not finished. He turns to Boris. I expected more from you, Boris. We will escape on the lifeboat, but the both of you shall be executed for your crime. He signals the battle to shoot. Pavel freezes. His head begins to twitch. And black worm-like tendrils begin to flick out of his sleeves. You look over at Boris, and the same thing is happening to him. You look to Stepanov and yell, Damn it, I should have stabbed Boris! Run! Yeah, well, I was going to achieve it called Traitor. Then, as Stepanov realizes what is happening, Pavel's arm transforms into a long, slender black blade and impales him on it. The tendrils making up the blade wriggle as they begin to consume the captain from the inside out. Without even thinking, you sprint down the corridors, seeing the bodies of the other crew members strewn about the ship. You see that some of the bodies have bullet wounds. You're unsure if they died because of the monster or because of the mutiny. Did you do... You begin to slow down as you realize what you have done. You divided the crew. You started the mutiny. The crew killed each other. And the monster picked off the stragglers. You killed them. It's not worth it. Or worth it. You're a murderer. You killed them. You killed them. You murdered. You fall to the floor and begin to sob. You hear a roar as the monster begins to approach you. There's nothing to fight it with. No other one. No one to help you. You accept death. Death is all you deserve. Everyone is dead because of you. Your selfishness killed the crew. Your inability to trust killed you. Look down at your hands. You can hear footsteps approaching you, but you don't look up. There is a hissing noise, and you feel a firm tug on the back of your clothes. You are lifting. You are lifted off the floor as you look upwards at your capture. You see a black mass of ever mutating worm like strands. It is both solid and shapeless at the same time. You look into its black eyes and close your eyes as it lets out a blood curdling shriek. You accept your fate. There is a deafening roar. In an instant, everything is white and your entire body is enveloped in an excruciating, burning sensation. Then a comforting warmth envelops you. 
The monster shrieks, but more high-pitched and wailing. It sounds as if it is dying. As you feel your body burn away, you realize what has happened. The explosives have gone off, and this is it. There is no way to survive the explosion. Even though you know you're about to die, you feel some comfort knowing the creature was caught in the blast. Close your eyes. As you close your eyes, all sensation begins to fade away until you feel nothing. I couldn't read all of that. You got the ending enveloped flames. Fancy. So, my. Pyromaniac ending. Yeah, do you want to hear my ending, Hatchet? Sure. Me and Orbarov escaped, but a creature had poked a hole in our raft. No, it wasn't a creature. It was shrapnel from the explosion, and we got onto I onto land just in time. But we were like thousands of miles away from civilization. Come to think, we probably shouldn't have said that because we were gonna have Jerry play this now. Oh shit! Right. Why are you so short-sighted? Right. Don't worry, I'm sure I'll do a bad end. Oh, Jesus. Why is Discord, please? Yeah. Anyways, you ready, Jerry? Yeah. Oh, God. You okay? Yeah, it's just Discord, your, your deep fried mic, and my headset being loud. Uh. I'm sorry. That was good. Yeah, did you enjoy the game, though, Hatchet? I mean, yeah, that was a damn good game. But also, unfortunately, thanks to my general media intake, uh, <laughs> by the end of that game, uh, that monster started to sound really familiar to some other things I've seen. Yeah, I know. Yeah, what, wait, what'd you say? Jerry? I'm sorry, I was doing a, a music group. I said you died in a fire. Oh. Anyways. Um, yeah, I, I knew you would like this game, Hatchet, which is why I wanted to stream with you uh, the first run, but you weren't all around. Yeah. <laughs> As, like, and in case it wasn't obvious, mm -hmm. this game just ends up reminding me of porn. Fair. And I think I remember you telling me at some point you like choose your own adventure stuff. I do like that. That's yeah. that's the general vibe of of game that I like. Yeah, so I know this is like the perfect game for both you and me. It's horror and it's choose your own adventure. <laughs> horror adventure. <laughs> choose your own incredibly gruesome death. Alright, anyways. Start yeah, like I said, that run did not take as long as you thought it would. I mean, it was longer than mine, but, like... Uh, yeah. It did not take that long. Jerry, do you want me to keep reading as Albert during your run? I don't care either way. Okay. Yeah. You just let Jerry do the, uh, the um, you know, choosing. Yeah. Alright. Begin. We, we can skip that. <laughs> November 9th, 1962. His name is Victor Pavlov. For an oceanographer aboard the Soviet frigate, the Parmesan, you were tasked with mapping the ocean floor of a region in the Arctic Sea. Nice. You are currently sitting on the cot in your personal quarters. It is a small room with just enough space for a bed and small desk. A torn envelope lies on your desk. You are fidgeting with small silver locket containing a picture of your wife and daughter. Is envelope clickable? Yeah. Yeah. The the red means that you can click it and get more information. The white means that it progresses the story. 
Yeah, I've yet to see anything else different. What What did you say, Jerry? Click down below. Okay. All right, here we go with the tiny ass lettering again. The envelope has been torn open without much care. There is a letter inside. Dear Vector, I don't know how much longer I can do this. I haven't seen or heard from you for months. I understand that the work you do is important, but you should be here. If not for me, then for Maya. He needs a father. I wanted it to be you, but you left. I... I know the Union needed you, but I wish you had stayed when I asked. Since you left, Le Leonid, Le Leonid, that guy from across the street has been coming by more often. He's helping me raise Maya. Just the other day she called him father. I wanted to correct her. I couldn't bring myself to do it. Because in some ways, he is her father. He's always been there, and you haven't. He's replacing you with him. I... Uh, would... Okay. I still love you, but you're losing Maya. Please, come back. With love, Lena. So she'll be calling him daddy. I'm sorry. Oliana. Right? Yes. What did you just say? <laughs> I said so she'll be calling him daddy. <laughs> who is calling who daddy in this manner? Yelania, the, the wife. Uh <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Moving on. Next. You grab the notebook and leave the room. You head, you head towards Best Hall, where the rest of the crew is eating a dinner. When you arrive at the door, you hear loud, muffled voices on the other side. You may enter whenever you're ready. Twelve hours later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just twelve hours just staring at the door. <laughs> and the monster's yeah. just like going around killing everyone in Mess Hall, we're just staring at the all. door. <laughs> What'd you say, Jerry? Oh, I just said, enter the mess hall. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You open the door and grab some food. Tonight it is mashed potatoes and peas. You sit down at the table and open up your notebook. There's a chart of the nearby sea inside. As you look over your notes, there's a loud burst of laughter from the crew. Chart. Chart. The charts are maps of the ocean floor that were made using sonography. Something about the charts of this region doesn't make sense to you. In the charts, there is a large body of mass at the bottom of the ocean. Perhaps it's lanternfish. That doesn't look like any natural for formation you have ever seen. But just lanternfish. This alone perplexed you. But, right, please stop. Oh, you can actually see that? I didn't know you could. We can! But the, <laughs> but the second shot you made showed that the mass moved to be safe. To be safe, you made a third shot. The final shot, you saw! You saw what appeared to be a chunk of mass break off from the main body. Perhaps his little rogue mutiny group of of a uh, lantern fish. <laughs> the shape of the maps does not look like any known. Or the shape on the maps does not look like any known animals, and there is no information on any plant based life that could move that fast. You'll be next to. Oh, okay. Shape, uh, you aren't sure if you accidentally discovered a new species of aquatic life? Or if your sensors are on the fritz again. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think this is where Jerry joined in. 
Jerry, I, I know for a fact Jerry joined in a little bit before that, because Jerry was yeah, here when I we talked about it. Yeah, I basically saw the entire Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I distinctly remember Jerry being here when we talked about Lanternfish the first time. Ah, uh, right. At the other table, the crew is laughing at your... You... you he, yeah, mm, is laughing at Yuri, who has two different plates for his peas and potatoes. A bellowing laugh fills the room. You look over and see over Rev, grinning ear to ear. Yuri begins gesturing towards his plates. Right. Don't worry, I'm just highlighting everything. <laughs> what is she? You little shit. <laughs> oh, Adurna's here, so Adurna gets to do a run as well. Okay, well, I, my... My thing oh. still stands. Yoronev... Uh. Raslanovich is a deckhand on the perfect... Uh, He joined the Soviet Navy at a young age, mainly for the free grub in the bay. He has a mild case of brunotectophobia, also known as the fear of different foods touching. This fear often makes him the target of ridicule for other cubs and crew members. Yeah, I'll be right back. Oh, okay. Uh, had to oh, entertain okay. stream. How the fuck am I supposed to do that? We can't do that. Right, Justine? Something, something, something. Bookworm, write out something for me to start reading. And I will read it as Albert. If you don't do that, I'll just go bring up the Vaporeon copypasta. It's okay, time is weird, especially during the pandemic. We went through ten years and just three revolutions in Russia, so... Uh, my head is killing me. I am Why are you... Okay, I, I I heard like intermittent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was my chair. <laughs> uh, bookworm says, "Did you know that in terms of human to Pokemon, ah, oh, no. <laughs> God damn it, bookworm. <laughs> you, you, you got to, you came back too quickly. I was about to read the Vaporeon copy pasta. Fuck you. I had to get something for my ass because I." My my ass put it too much of an end and I need a pillow to sit on my chair. Uh This was important information for you to share and not at all DMI. <laughs> this is I mean I have a fat ass, it's fine. I was thinking other reasons ass might need a but you know what? Let's close <laughs> Jerry. Click Jerry. Click over him. <laughs> no, not that. A thick ass is fucked. Over him, Jonas. So this is the resident mechanic for the Peremish. Mish. For the Peremish. Nick. He's been working on the Peremish Nick for six years and has, has grown to be very fond of the ship. You once heard him chewing to the ship engine when he walks him by the boiler room. He has a very large build, but he is very friendly. You have not talked to him much, but you could tell that for it, it was a very jovial person. You seem to enjoy talking to him. He is one of a kind. No one could replace him. Return. But stop licking your anus. Book says also omg this is gonna be weird with screen delay i mean um, if you don't want to do it you, you don't have to book 
Yeah. But yeah, I guess, Jerry, do you want to just read from now on? Oh, I was just doing because I felt impatient with Bright. Oh. Sorry. Oh, okay. Did you not hear what I said to Bu uh, the Busta? Yes, we heard we what you said to Busta. <laughs> oh. We need to bring attention to it. We can no, move on. No, I wasn't sure if you could or not because I, I would point it away from my microphone. Like. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was very simple. Be here, potato here. We never touch potatoes. Dora never attempts to explain anxiously. It's abomination. With what? My brain. What? I need to stop <laughs> looking at screen John. <laughs> we hear potato here. We never touch potatoes. Girl never attempts to explain anxiously. It's abomination. What wrong with that? Nothing wrong, Yuri. Hold up. Do you hear that? Motor fire. Aubrey flings few peas into your vers mashed potatoes. <laughs> Blyanka, why you do this? The room bursts into laughter as Yuri Nev scrambles to pick the peas out of his potatoes. Is Adara <laughs> still here? Say nothing. No. Adara... <laughs> Aderna popped in and then immediately left. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, now Jerry, you got your first choice of the of crossroads. Say nothing. Oh, you, you want to say nothing? You're different from yeah. both me and Hatchet. You stick to your corner of the room and finish up your meal. before finishing our meals and heading back out. As you as you pour over your notes for an hour, you realize that the rest of the crew is gone and your food is cold. You clean up your dishes and leave the mess hall to go back to your room. You know, at just... the very at huh? the very least, Soviet Navy is concerned with not giving a sailor scurvy yeah. by giving us potatoes True. and, and peas. Yeah. Also, I just realized, so far, every single run we've been through, everyone makes fun of Yuri before they die. Well, anyway, go back to the room. Well, no sh No shit, that's like a necess- Like, our first option is whether or not to tell people off for him being mocked. You're, you're just, like, describing the concept of chronological time. Hello, Aderna. Aderna's back! Let me go to OBS and fix some things. Because now you guys are super fucking tiny. Uh, I mean, we're not that small. I fixed it. Mm. Oh, Jerry has Wait, one paranoia. We're not smaller than Bright. Uh, fuck Did you. Did I get paranoia before I'm everyone else? Yes, you did. <laughs> and, bookworm, and Bookworm says, to be fair, chronological time is is a tough concept for Bright. Uh, fuck you. When you get to your personal quarters, you sit down yeah. at the desk and begin to look over the notes and charts of the region. After a few hours, you notice your eyelids grow heavier and heavier. You start to think about sleep. However, so many questions still plague you. Go to bed. Cool. Oh, yeah. Scream. <laughs> Instead of just saying, ah, you just say, scream. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll be more proactive with reading. Alright. You are awakened by deafening scream. You clamor out of bed and rush towards the source. You arrive to find a stunned, st stunned, stunned, Oberib, mouth agape, eyes wide open, staring into a, into a supply closet. Look inside. 
As you get closer to the closet, you are hit with a pungent smell. You slowly peer inside and your jaw immediately drops. The walls are drenched in blood, intestines are strewn about the shelves like ornaments and blood pools at the floor. One look at the intestines and you realize something terrible is human. It's human. You feel your stomach churn as you stumble backwards. Gagging, you lean on the wall for support. A torrent of footsteps is heard as the other crew members arrive. After a few minutes, the entire crew is at the supply closet. Closet. You, recoll you recollect yourself and begin to observe the others. Some of the crew grab Orberev. Still frozen in shock and attempt to pull him away from the scene. Others gather in small groups and begin whispering. It's probably just animal, right? Think Yuri. Think Yuri. Another crew member interjects. Does that look like animal intestine? No. You wait for more of the crew to arrive. Arrive. Soon, Captain Stepanov arrives and demands an explanation. As you look at the 13 crew members around you, you'll notice one odd detail that stands out to you. No one is missing. Keep it to yourself. Oh, alright. You stand quietly as the others debate what happened. Captain Stepanov frowns as the crew members continue arguing over what happened. Spotting you, he walks across the hall to where you are. Vector, you are a scientist. What do you make of this? Tell him what you know. Jerry is so paranoid now. Okay, yeah. up. As you explain that the blood probably came from one of the crew, doubt begins to creep over the captain's face. Stefanov looks, lets out a deep sigh. Yo, yo, Moyo, what do you suggest then? Run tests on the blood. Blood. Stepanov gives you an instructions look, or incredulous look. Blood tests? Is this necessary? We don't have a lot of testing kits. I don't want to waste kits on punch. They will put the crew at ease. The crew is on edge. If nothing else, blood tests will let them think. Will let them think we have plan of some kind. It will help put them at ease, and do some wonders for Morel. Wait for Stepanov to respond. Captain Stepanov squints as he thinks it over. After a few moments, he reluctantly nods to you and then turns to address the crew. The Vector will perform tests on blood. Until we get results, everyone will be in mess hall. As the crew heads towards mess hall, you grab a sample of blood and head to medical room. Medical room. Book says Jiri is so paranoid now. Yeah, you're already up to paranoia 15. Yeah. You grab a blood test kit and the medical files for all of the crew members. You plan to use blood type to narrow down suspects. You start to test and begin logging the blood types of each crew member. As you are doing this, the first step of the test is completed. Begin the second step. You start You start speculating about where the blood could have come from as you wait for the results of the test. Results. All right. Before you say anything else, I just looked it up. There are five endings. Oh. Ah. Uh -huh. We only got two. Oh, okay. Also, just so you know, I also looked it up. This game is actually free. 
You got cut off. What I said this say? game is free. What? This is a free game. Okay. Oh, alright. As soon as the test is completed, you compare it to the testing manual. What type is somewhat rare? A negative. Scan your notes for the crew's blood type and find that only two crew members have the blood type. Both Rev Denisovich and Yurenev Roslovich. Roslanovich. Report to the med call. Russian names. As you walk to mess hall, you try to make sense of what you are even trying to say. If any person... <sighs> if any person lost the amount of blood that was in the room, they would be dead. But you saw both Orberev and Yurinev at the supply closet. It couldn't be from one of them, would it? You arrive at the door to the mess hall. Russian names intensify, think book. <laughs> Enter the mess hall to find the crew waiting for you. Some are eating breakfast. Others still seem to be in shock. Captain Stepanov looks up at you as you walk in. Well, Victor, what did you find? You look around the room and spot Oberev, who is sitting at the table, arms crossed. Staring straight ahead. Next to him is Yarnev, and he is eating leftovers from a plate in front of him. The plate contains both peas and potatoes. Carrier findings. As you show the results, the crew turns around to look at the two suspects. Oberev doesn't fidget doesn't fidget, and Yarenev continues to eat his potatoes and peas. Captain Stepanov frowns. You notice one crew member staring at Yarenev as he eats with a, buff with a baffled look. He begins to speak. Y Yuri, your peas touch potato. At the uttering of these words, Oberev awakens from his daze and begins to glare at Yurinev. Your the room is overcome with a deathly silence as the crew takes in this information. Information. Yurinev scoffs and looks around at everyone before answering, Yeah? So? So... The real Yuri would has fear of food touchy. He hates what appears to touch potato. Oberev ex exclaims. Oberev slowly stand stands up. Oberev's massive build looms over the much smaller Yarnev as he steps forward. You're not him. You're not really Yuri. You're not my friend. Oberev lunges at Yurinev, clasping his hands around Yurinev's neck. The rest of the crew rushes towards Or- Oberev to stop As the crew tries to put Oberev away, or try to pull Oberev away, I just realized that Yuri got over I just, I just realized what Yuri got out an unearthly scream and his eyes roll into the back of his head. Yerenev's body begins thrashing as a black liquid begins oozing out of his eyes. His body contorts unnaturally as it begins to transform into something not of this world. The crew backs away in fear as they watch Oberev struggle with the thrashing Yerenev. After a few moments, Yer Yurinev's body goes limp. Suddenly, a tangle of jet black tentacles spread out of Yurinev's back. Some of the crew let out terrified yelps as they scramble for the door. The creature yet lets out one last streak before slashing Oberev's leg with its tentacles and scurrying off, escaping through one of the vents. 
The crew looks towards the vent, confused by the horror they just witnessed. After a few moments, a crew member runs over to Oberev and begins to treat his leg. There is some shouting to your left. You turn to see another crew member lying on the floor, blood spurting from his neck. A few people put him on a gurney and part him out to the mess hall. As you come to your senses, you begin to come up with a plan. We need to evacuate. We have to abandon ship. Take lifeboats and get out of here. Captain Stepanov stares blankly ahead, almost as if in a daze. As you speak, he looks at you blankly. Slowly, he begins to shake his head, and blank expression gradually turns to anger. First off, Vector, you are not captain. I am. I am the captain now. Second, we can't abandon ship. Not because of some... Some animal. That was not just animal. That was a monster. It was Yuri. It replaced him. It could do it again. Yep. Okay. Everyone. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. How do we know there isn't another one among us when Vector, if we bring it, bring it us then Vector. If we bring it with us, the situation is same. The blood we found was A negative. Oberev is the only crew member with the blood type now. While he is in shock, he isn't acting strange. We bring everyone. No. There are too many important shots and equipment on the ship to just abandon it. We find creature, we kill creature. That's an order. As Captain Stepanov walks away, he holds two crew members to accompany him. You look after him with look after him with disdain. I agree, random character. You look around at the rest of the room as the crewmate leave as the captain leaves. The rest of the crew is nervously fidgeting. Some stare at others with suspicion, eyes darting back and forth, assessing who they can trust. Excuse me. I tried to mute, but... Assessing who they can trust. Others are already huddling in small group, whispering frantically while occasionally Glancing nervously at the others, you watch with dismay as some of the crew sneaks away. You need to wake them now. Ugh. You know the crew's best chance at survival is to escape before the creature can replace someone else. But Captain Stepanov won't order an evacuation. Oberev is sitting in the corner, his leg has been freshly bandaged, and he is alone. What do you do? Organize a mutiny. Are we or doing mutiny no, no, again? No, no. Oh. Let's see. I don't want to do escape on your own, coward's route. I, I said I don't. Don't. Asking Oberev for help sounds like it leads to a route where just the two of you get away. So I don't like it, but I have to go with the bottom. Organize a mutiny. Alright. Everyone, Stepanov cares more about equipment than our lives. We escape now, and blow up ships so that the creature cannot follow. It'll kill us and replace us like Yuri if we don't. So we have to. Several members of the crew begin to get more riled up as you talk. It's time for a mutiny. As you finish your speech, some answer your call for a mutiny with a thunderous roar. Others shrink away and freeze. What the cats? What the fuck? Ah. Uh, 
Okay, I'm where sure was some I? do not answer with cats, what the fuck. <laughs> what? Okay. Bookworm, no. Bro, mute me with thunderous roar. Others shrink away and flee from the scene. You look around the room to see five members of the crew walking toward you. You stand in front of you with fists clenched, wafting, waiting for orders. Wafting, wafting for orders. <laughs> Give orders. Give orders. Five members of the crew have joined your mutiny. You order two to raid the armory and the rig of the ships of war. The other two will gather the food from the kitchen and grab other supplies. The last one will go with you to secure the lifeboat. You don't quite trust them enough yet to let them secure the boat without you. Leave the mess hall. Mess hall. As you leave the mess hall, you tell the mutineer with you that you need to pick up some items from your room first. You walk briskly towards your room, the mutineer following close behind. You're not sure what his name is. Ask his name. It's Boris. I worked in kitchen. You smile assuringly at him. Nice to meet you. Together, we might make it out alive. You both continue running towards the living quarters. When you arrive at the living quarter, Boris states that he needs to get something from his room as well. You agree to meet at the entrance in five minutes. You then head to your room alone. Soon you arrive at your door. Open the door. You open the door to your room. There is no one there, and there is a large knife laying on top of your desk. You often used to used it to open letters or carve when you were bored. You grab the knife, figuring a weapon might come in handy. You catch a glint in the corner of your eye and look to find your golden locket. That's a thing I noticed the first time. In in the first time we hear about the locket, it's a silver locket. But now it's yeah. a golden locket. It mm. might be um an error of uh, translation. That's what I'm guessing, yeah. It is open, and your daughter's face is smiling at you. Well, I actually didn't quite finish reading. Discord? Okay. okay. You pause a moment before closing the locket and stashing it in your pocket. As you grab the locket, you accidentally knock over some papers on your desk. You look over and see that it is the chart of the sea bottom in this area. The chart with the strange reading yesterday. Read over the chart. Okay. You remember the unidentified body of mass that showed up in the charts earlier. You start to wonder if it had something to do with the creature. As you read over such charts, you begin to piece together theories in the third chart. But the theories. In the third chart, a chunk of the mass broke off from the main body and appeared to be moving. Fucking Discord. Okay. You study the chart for a few more moments before finally realizing but the chart displays a slight altitude change for that chunk. Was it moving upwards? Towards the ship? If this thing came from the body of mass, could it be just a small part of a much larger organism? Leave the room. You wait at the agreed upon waiting point, but Boris doesn't show up. Your mind begins to wander as you wait. It's been five minutes and he's still not back yet. You begin to grow antsy, antsy, antsy. Leave him behind. 
It's been too long. The scrambled text. You turn to leave and begin walking when you hear something behind you. Keep going. You race out of the room and start headed toward the lifeboat. The lifeboat is only a few more turns away, but as you turn the corner, you spot something in the distance. Three of the crew walking into a room, but that is not the s- That is not what stops you in your tracks. Behind them, there is something more sinister slowly crawling across the ceiling. A hulking mess of writhing black worms stalks them and follows them into the room. The creature. You immediately dart behind the corner and cover your mouth with your hands, desperately trying to muffle the sound of your breath. After a moment, you work up the courage to peek your head around the corner to look. But the monster is nowhere to be found. Wait. Suddenly, you hear a terrified scream and a loud, deafening bang that reverberates through the hall. A gunshot. There is silence for a few moments. Suddenly, there is another shot, and a blood-curdling shriek fills the air. It's unlike anything you have ever heard before. Frightening, wicked, unearthly. Abruptly, you hear a flurry of wax, followed by, followed by the sound of flesh being sliced. There are a few agonizing screams, and then nothing. Your breathing becomes short and erratic as you listen to them die. Go back. You begin to slowly back away. After a few steps, you turn around and race back to the way you came. You will have to go the long way to get to the lifeboat. If you race through the halls, you n or as you race through the halls, you notice small blood splatters decorates the walls. The creature has been busy. Without even thinking, you start to run faster, hurrying with every step. As you run, you see a figure in the distance. It looks like Oberiv. Chase after Oberiv. You catch up to the figure. As you get closer, you see that it does, in fact, look like Oberev. But, but is it really him? Oberev turns around and looks at you with suspicion as you run up to him. Hold up, Chevok. Stop right there. He begins backing up from you. He doesn't trust you. That makes sense. Attempt to convince him. Oberev, it's me, Vector. I am not a monster. Oberev eyes, I sus eyes you suspiciously, looking you up and down before responding. If you are not a monster, prove it. Tell him about your daughter. You take your locket out of your pocket and show him the picture of your daughter. Your eyes get a little teary as you begin to explain. This is Maya. She's my daughter. I need to get back to her. And I think I might need help to do that. Please. Oberoff stands and dance becomes a bit more relaxed as you explain. It's a roar. Looking mouse, come on. And it's like, sorry, sorry, give me a sec. Okay. Without even thinking, you jump into the nearest room and pull Oberev inside with you. As you close the door, it turns to pitch black. There is a tiny hole in the door that lets small beam of light. You hear footsteps as the creature passes through the hole. That's probably a bad idea, but peer through the hole. Oh no. Oh, Body Snatcher, witness the transformation achievement. Holding your breath, you peer through the hole and look out into the hall. At first, you can't see anything as you look into the hallway, but soon a writhing mass of black worms steps in front of the hole. You feel your whole body freeze as the key creature looks around. 
Its body begins to pulse and shape begins to mutate. Slowly it morphs into the man-like appearance, gradually changing colors. When it's done, you realize that it just morphed into the man you saw only moments before. That's not fucking creepy. Back away, yeah, back the fuck away. You hear the monster walk away before it gets complete, goes completely silent. Oberev looks through the hole before letting out a deep breath. Well, I guess if creature is out there, it couldn't be you. Listen, I have a plan. Oberev flicks a switch, illuminating the room. You squint at your eyes just as a light. Looking around you, you'll see you are in a supply closet. You look down and see Oberev is holding out something. It's explosives! What are what you are doing? doing with that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to rig the ship to blow. That's what. The thing killed my friend, so I returned favor. I already planted some explosives on the engine to make ship dead in water. But I need you to plant explosives in the hull to ensure it sinks. While you plant them, I will fix the engine on lifeboat. Can you do that? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Everyone else is basically dead at this point. Yeah. I thought I could save the crew. I was wrong. I was stupid. Yeah. Okay. Good. Glad I can count- I could count on you. When you get to the front of ship, arm the bomb for 15 minutes. Oberef hands you the explosives. The both of you nod to each other before slowly exiting the closet. Head to the front of the ship. Okay. Uh, Bookworm, Oberev is not- you're thinking of the captain, not Oberev. Or Oberov. Yeah. You dash toward the ladder that leads to the lower deck of the ship. As you descend, the parmesan creaks and groans, followed by the sound of scratching metal. The ship is scraping against the ice. No one is steering. You plant the explosives on a wall and arm it to explode 20 minutes from now. There's a beep as the time starts up. Head toward the lifeboat, yeah. As you run, your mind begins to wander frantically. As your mind races, you begin to mysteriously ponder. Where is it? Is it watching? Where is it? Yeah. What if it replaces Oberoff? Just where is it? You begin to wonder where it is. It could be anyone, possibly even anything. There is no way to know what it can can mimic. It could be in an in an inanimate object like a plant or a chair. The thought of it hiding in plain sight terrifies you and you begin to look around suspiciously. You'll need to get out of here. The lifeboat is just around the corner. Turn the corner. The lifeboat is now in view. Next to the boat, Oberev is waiting. He is anxiously fidgeting with his wrench. Before... He finally sees you. He begins to smile grin grinly, grimly. As you get closer, you slow down before stopping altogether. You can't help but think about how the monster can mimic anyone. What took you so long? Well, hurry on in. Well, hurry on in. The ship is set to blow in 20 minutes. Overall stops for a second and looks at you inquisitively. What is wrong? He originally said 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then you set it for 20, and now he said 20 minutes. You know what? Ask, is it really you? Yeah. I'd rather be safe than sorry. What are you saying? You think I am that thing? Over of size. I suppose you are right to think so. He pauses a moment before continuing. Not sure how to prove I am not monster, but I can't tell you. I hate that thing. Er, I hate that thing and will kill it. The explosives are armed. 
believe me when I tell you, it will bring great pleasure to watch the son of a bitch burn in the explosion. And that is why I am not monster. Believe him. Cord. Let's see if I'm wrong. You board the ship with him. He smiles as you board the lifeboat. See, not so bad, right? Oberiv looks at you with warm smile. Now let's get going. He walks over to the release mechanism and pulls the switch. There is a loud clank of metal as the lifeboat jerks back. However, the mechanisms don't detach. Oberiv's smile is quickly replaced with a panicked look. The release mechanisms are jammed. Probably because of the cold. Your mail. Uh. Overov, ta uh, mm. Overov takes out his tools and begins working at the mechanisms, locking the lifeboat in place. You hear another roar from the other side of the ship. Uh. Shut it, Vector. I'm working as fast as I can. As he works, the sound of the clanking metal echoes through the ship. You hear another roar. You aren't sure, but you think it was closer this time. Oberev looks back at you with a worried grin. I think we got its attention, comrade. I think you're both thinking, what's going to happen first? You get the boat free or it kills you two? Or you die in an explosion? I mean, yeah. there is an ending where it eats you. You can mind us keep going. But I've turns around and keep working. Ten mi Ten minutes! Pass by, but it feels like an eternity. You hear another roar, much closer this time. In the distance you see a shadow growing over, growing ever larger. You look wordly at Oberef. Oberef is coming. Just a second. Got it. Poke holy! What? What the fuck does that mean? Oberef jumps back into the boat. Hit the switch. Yeah, hit the switch. In an instant, the lifeboat is released and falls violently towards the ocean water. It hits the water with a deafening smack, creating a massive splash and soaking you with ice-cold water. Oberef flicks a switch on the engine. With a roar, the entire... The engine sputters to life and Oberef steers the boat away from the ship. A smile stretches across your face as you watch the Parmeshkibi is fish with it. As you watch the Parmesan cheese grow smaller as you get further away. Yeah, I think it's for, I think it's for me. Parmeshkibi. Yeah. We did it. We're going to make Boom. Boom, bitch. The Pershnevik is swallowed up in a fiery explosion. As your ears ring from the intense sound of the explosion, you feel something whiz past your head. You open and close your mouth rapidly, trying to fix your ringing ears. Once the ringing begins to fade away, you look up and... Oberev, who is staring past you with a look of horror. Your toes suddenly feel cold and wet. Comrade, there's a leak. You look at the front of the boat and see a hole where the water is gushing forth. You come to the realization of what flew past you was a... was shrapnel. The explosion, and it must have punched a hole in the boat, yeah. in the bow. The boat is sinking, and you need to get to land now. Yeah. Oberev steers towards the ice sheet as the boat starts to sink. As the boat rams into the ice sheet, you and Oberev both lurch forward in the crash are knocked down to your hands and feet before the boat sinks. 
you and Oberev managed to scramble onto the icy shore. Panting, you stand up and look out at the ice feet around you. Oberev is next to you, gasping for air. You both take a moment to catch your breath before silently nodding at each other. Yeah. Yeah, well, where is home? Oberev points silently towards the rising sun. Without exchanging any words, you begin walking in that direction. Oberev follows closely behind. As you walk forward, you can only think of one thing. Maya, I'm coming. And I won't be replaced. Why does it feel ominous? Yeah, you got the same ending yeah. I did, just in a different path. Nah. Okay. Somehow I feel like mine is a slightly worse version, because I feel like there's more reason to be paranoid of Oh, but I... Yeah. But he will be. Uh, so, as much as... As much as I want to continue... Oh, Jesus Christ, Jerry. As much as I want to continue... What do you mean? What? I heard like a chip bag or something from Jerry. <laughs> no, there wasn't any sound like that. I was trying to find something to itch my back with. Um, oh, that's what the sound was. was. But yeah, anyways. I'm not sure if it was like the heat from today because like this morning it was at negative. It was at not negative. It was at 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Then all of a sudden it was at 82. Yeah, like you're later in the day. In out way too much. Okay, Discord. Anyways, in this morning it was thirty degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, Fahrenheit, and then later on in the day when I got off work, it was like eighty-two degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Okay. I think it might have affected me with something. I don't know, but I'm not feeling well. Well. Maybe you um. need. Um, uh, I forgot what those are called. Food? What are the things that are in Gatorade? Electrolytes. Electrolytes. Sorry. I was trying to get food's attention, but you were right. That's electrolytes. Maybe Bright needs electrolytes. Food is kind of ADHD being on the phone. That's fair. Or a water. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna. Can we can probably continue this uh, some of this tomorrow? Then do or, or you might need more food, but we can't really help you with that. Fair, and it's too late for that, anyways. Anyways, we had that a consistent viewer count of four. Yeah, I'm thinking we just continue this off tomorrow, and then do coffin of Andy and Lele after we get a Derna uh, after we get a Derna and bookworm. Like, their runs. That way everyone has a run. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I'm just... Uh, I don't know. I'm just not feeling the greatest. I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh, and a jar's gone. Yeah, I mean, I do have candy for midnight snacks. Book, uh, bookworm. And don't worry, I will drink water book. I won't drink uh, the gift I was given, which was uh, Mountain Dew alcohol. Yeah, that's a thing. I mean, okay. I was also given um, a frozen Chuck E. Cheese pizza. Okay. Now, if it's actually going to taste like a Chuck E. Cheese pizza, then I'm not sure if I'll finish it. <laughs> Look, what time? Even, even crap is better than that thing. Fair. Yeah, it could what be time would, What time would you be planning to stream tomorrow? Uh, anywhere between 7 or 9. Yeah, so Sorry, could you re could you repeat any time between seven or nine? Ow. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I may not stream tomorrow because my microphone's this bad. I like okay. do tests to see if it's if it's still bad. If it is, I might just have to cancel it till I get the uh, new mic. 
Because it looks like it's getting worse. Is it the mic or is it Discord? It seems to be the mic. It's coming through stream as well. Yeah. The, all the crackling and uh, deep fridedness. Hey, the microphone's I through. I think I've had enough of loud sounds. That uh, fair. Yeah. And, and plus, my microphone's three years old. Yeah. <laughs> it's dying. <laughs> Have, have a good night, Jerry. Good night, good Jerry. Night. Anyway, uh, do you have any last words? Well, oh. nope. Oh. Anyway, book last words. Go. Sorry, I couldn't get your run in, Derna. Wait, what? I said I, I'm sorry I couldn't get your run in tonight, Derna. Oh, for this game you mean? Yeah. Yes, for this. I mean, it could also just be my narcolepsy acting up, too. That's pretty likely. Yeah. Because I do act negatively towards heat with narcolepsy. Yeah, I'm still wondering how I can get like 30 degree weather in the morning in in the 80s in the afternoon well, in the winter. Right? That, that, that's... Hmm? It's not winter. One, one is not winter. It's fall. Um, oh. Also, global warming. Fair. <laughs> and then also, to like, comment, the typical subscribe, and simple, follow typical, bright uh, weather pattern. Horror if you don't, I will Hold execute some warmer, order so. 66 on your ass. Also, give Bright money if you can, so she can be less <laughs> dependent worm, on what her the job. Fuck? I say, I say that like the thing that affects it is affecting that the most is global warming. Yeah. That's that's why we had this little this freeze, and then we had the summer time back in. It's just. Hello. Yeah. Uh, He's like, hello, motherfucker. You thought you were done with me? <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, Adorna, last words. Go. Um. You're still getting bothered. No. Thankfully. Well, is your like stream getting bothered? Like the like uh, viewer count thing? So? No. No. We've just okay. been at four the whole time. Yeah. Okay. I guess since like last stream you were at like 30. Oh. Yeah. Last stream, I, last stream I was here for. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm able to watch. I'm just wondering why my microphone all of a sudden decided to die. Uh. Oh, no. yeah, I'm... All I know is I'm, I'm continuously just bringing you down. Yay. There we go. Now I'm not going to hear that. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, so... Oh my I'm gosh, fuck. Oh, yeah. I could probably say that. Um, yeah, I'm having my senior project in about ten. Wait, wait, how many days is it now? Didn't you say it was on the 14th? 10 days. Or the 13th? 10 days. 13th. Yeah, it's 13th. in 10 days. Next, wait, no, two Mondays from now. What? Okay, the Monday after next. There we go. That's going to be easier. Yeah, and it's honestly the like project is probably gonna last an hour or so at least. <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. 
Because I have like 40 minutes of music. Then I have like probably like 20 minutes of speaking at least. <laughs> For me, I'm probably not going to stream until or like on my own until like Monday or Tuesday whenever I have the graphics mm -hmm. card here and installed. Fair. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. You, Look, got, you got this, Adurna. Mm -hmm. We'll do amazing. Yeah, it's gonna be on the thir Yeah, the date is the 13th. Like, yeah. Mon Monday the 13th. Mon a month after the Friday the 13th. Nice. Anyway, your last uh, word, Journey. Uh, well, uh, oh, oh God, damn it! Also, <laughs> after uh, Darna, after you, uh, after you said, uh, God damn it! After you said about the Friday the Thirteenth week, uh, Busta snorted. <laughs> I was like, huh? Friday the Thirteenth. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hatchet. Last that words might, go. My demon business has it. <laughs> the demon business you told me to do has been done, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Ancient Busta approves. Exactly. <laughs> um. Uh, my head is killing me. Also, mm. I, I, I did just cackle. I did just cackle like the witch. Nice. <laughs> um. My only last words will be tomorrow is the end of an era. Mm. Because tomorrow is the day that the final episode of Attack on Titan is airing in Japanese. Oh. Agent sent by Hatchet is a Satanist and is an astronaut doggo. Says so what? Yep. Okay. Add that to the lore. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, the, there's. He was sent by Hatchet and he is a member of my fort. Yes. Anyways. Was that your last words, Hatchet? What? So is that your last words? Kinda, yeah. Just like, yeah. I'm I'm very excited because mm -hmm. my favorite series is finally re receiving its final episode, and it's looking like it's going to be peak fiction. Uh. Mhm. <laughs> Sent by Hatchet. Sent by Hatchet, but handpicked for Hatchet's team by Aderna. Nice. Anyways. Uh, Danger Noodles. I'm sorry for my mic being, uh, being utter shit. But, um, I hope to see you guys next time for your next mission. And, um, uh, Malarkey. Orphan Cannon.